A very good morning to each one of you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for taking time to tune into this broadcast and to listen to this sharing. We, it's a privilege to share the Word of God with you. Thank you once again. I trust that the Lord has been good to you. He's a good God. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's a good God. <clears throat> this morning I want to share with us on the subject. I've entitled, if you bow, you bend. If you bow, you bend. I'm taking it from Daniel chapter 3. We are going to read the whole chapter and then we just pick a few things from that particular chapter. We all are familiar with the chapter of the three Hebrew boy, bro, boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits, and it's with six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And the king Nebuchadnezzar was... Uh, sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the de uh, dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar uh, had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried out, In you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psalter, in symphon symphony with all the kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately and the, into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, in symphony with all kinds of music, all the people's nations and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the psalter, and symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. And then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to, the, to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psalter in symphony with all kinds of music. And you fall down and worship uh, the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. I like the way they answered. Listen to this. O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and, exp and the expression of and his face changed towards Shadrach, Mishan, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they hit the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed these, those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished 
and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps and administrators, governors and kings, counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they frustrated, frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation or language which speaks anything against, anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an airship because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. I deliberately read through the chapter. It's a chapter that we know. <clears throat> but um, I wanted us to refresh our memories. I said my, the title of a message, if, if you bow, you burn. Uh, I think it is clear how uh, the title comes up. But the point of the title and also this particular scripture reading is that we are living in a time where standards have changed. I was reading the other day in Romans chapter 2, talking of the current times and how the evil, the, 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 there is evil. It talks of a particular group of people and says, inventors of new evil. <laughs> I, I was, that captured my attention. In, inventors of new evil. So we are living in times where people invent new evil. Evil that was not there when our parents grew up or when we grew up. There is new evil that is being invented. New standards are being set that are trying to force us to live. Uh, and, and, and the world system is trying to force us to live according to that standard. And so the essence of what I'm sharing is if we bow to those standards, we will bend. It might not be literally, but it means that we will lose our testimony, we will lose our fire, we will lose our zeal, we will, we will uh, not be who we are, we will not have the impact that we are meant to have as believers. If we bow to the standards of the world, to the pressure that is being put across to us, uh, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego stood up and says, Oh King, the God whom we serve will deliver us. Let me give an example. Uh, of what I'm talking about. Uh, in our nation, Zimbabwe, uh, at the time I took my driver's license, um, the, 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 the corruption was rampant and it was rife. Uh, I'm told right now it is still there. In other words, uh, for you to be able to get it, you must bribe somebody. You can ever, sometimes you do it through your driving school uh, or I don't know how they do it. But I remember when I got my license, I got it after the fifth attempt. When I got it, um, I, I, the fifth attempt, it was after a number of years that I hadn't gone. I first did four consecutive attempts and then stopped because I was discouraged. But when I went the second time, the fifth time, I got, for those of you that are familiar with the Zimbabwean context, I got what is called a provisional driver's license in the month of February. The intention is, uh, because sometimes you fail so many times, the intention is to go uh, as many times as possible. Um, uh, so that when the one year for that license expires, you would have at least done, at least gotten somewhere. But I felt, no, don't go. And when I finally went, it was in the month of October. I did 10 lessons, and then when I went, uh, I got it, uh, I got my driver's license. Uh, unbeknown to me, was that the reason I probably felt uh, not to go was that there was so much corruption in terms of bribery, but the, in the month of September, there were, action was taken against the corruption, such that when I then went in the month of October, all the people that were involved in corrupt activities had been fired. 
and a new lot of examiners had come in from Harare. And so the whole place was shaken up. They were not asking for bribes. My point is the bribery system is rife. And so you, you, you can be put under pressure as a believer to say, unless I bribe somebody, I cannot be able to get my driver's license. And uh, probably right now as a believer, you, you have a driver's license, but you got it through a bribe. I was preaching this in church and saying, a license, driver's license that is gotten through bribery, very rarely do you hear the individual testifying and getting excited. You will probably discover after two, one year and you see them driving, oh, you got a driver's license. Ah, oh, yes, I got it a year ago. Oh, during our, oh, before the coup, November 7th. So people never testify about it because there's nothing to testify. You, you actually bribed to get it. Uh, a while ago, uh, it's a building project that we are uh, involved in. And uh, I, I took um, uh, this builder to probably get somebody to come and take a look, inspect. And he was saying to me, ah, my friend, and don't you have 10 bucks, 10 US, so that we uh, quicken the process? I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. This is their job. Why should I give them 10 US for, 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 for what this? But he was trying to put pressure to me to pay something. Uh, the same thing has happened over the years at the border posts, where there is pressure put upon you to, 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 to f hasten the process by paying someone. So that is another a standard that is being placed in one context that we must refuse to bow down to. If we bow down to that, uh, I, I said we burn. It might not be literary, but you lose your testimony. You no longer have the moral uh, uh, authority to correct anyone who's doing a similar thing. So it is important that we maintain the high ground so that we are able to have the moral authority to be able to speak into a situation. For some of us that come from a situation where probably there is ancestral worship in your home uh, uh, and um, they then invite you to go and participate in that. If you participate, you might think you are doing them a favor, but it will not be long that the very same people that ask you to participate will mock you for participating. If you try to tell them about Jesus, they will then say, uh, yeah, there's nothing you can tell us. We were with you. Uh, at that particular ceremony. So you must be able to stand up and say, no, I am now a believer. I am not going to participate in ancestral worship. This is who I am. I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. And when you stand your ground, what, you, what I want you to, I want to guarantee you is that the very same people uh, that would have tried to put pressure on you will respect you. Why? Look at what Nebuchadnezzar did. After uh, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were not bent up in the fire. He is the very same one now to servants of the Most High God. And then he begins to promote the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And begins, says, whoever speaks against this God, their houses will be uh, brought down to ashes. Why? It is because they stood up and did not bow down to the pressure. Uh, it is important that we don't bow down to any pressure. It could be a moral standard wherever we are, any part of the world, it, we, that we do not bow down to any pressure. And, and when we don't bow down, that's when the God we serve can be lifted up and can be promoted. It might not be so, maybe immediately. Sometimes it might take a while. Because uh, uh, like in our African country, not only Africa, but in many of our countries, Corruption is institutionalized. The, 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 the systems of paying bribes are institutionalized such that if you don't pay, you get, bri you, you get punished or you, you get persecuted. I remember uh, a particular uh, a brother who passed away not so long ago. He lived in Nigeria for quite a long while. Says one day he got to a roadblock and um, he was given a ticket for something on his vehicle. And then, and then he said, I don't have the money. Give me something so that I appear in court. And the brother says, says the policeman said, I'm not, I'm not taking you to court. How do you think I'm going to finish my house? I'm not taking you to court. You must pay. So that's the kind of institutionalized corruption. You are put under pressure. You get persecuted. You, in such an instance, you must be prepared to even sleep at the road, police roadblock. Because 
the institution is powerful. But, uh, like, which is why I'm saying it might not change immediately. But after a while, people respect you to say, the same people that tried to push you to compromise will say, you know, so and so, I respect them. You know, there was so much uh, pressure put on them to do this, but they stood their ground. Right now, the nations of our, of, of, of our continent are, are collapsing because of corruption. We need men and women that can stand up, men and women that will not bow. Because if we bow, we burn. Right now, our countries are burning uh, with poverty and, and all sorts of things because people have bowed down to the pressure to compromise and have, uh, have moved in and, and probably uh, bribed people. If we don't bow, we don't bend. But if we bow, we bend. Um, I want you to notice something. The fourth man appeared because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down. The fourth man. And Nebuchadnezzar says the fourth man is like the son of God. Uh, I was tempted to preach Oral Robert's message, uh, the fourth man. Uh, for those of you that have not listened to it, uh, Google it up. I'm sure it's there on, 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 on the internet. Powerful message about the fourth man where he took, takes us from Genesis and shows us about this fourth man in, in the book of Genesis. He's the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's this. The fourth man will only appear when you do not bow. If you bow, the fourth man does not appear. God appears when you stand your ground. And so, that's what we see in the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In that the fourth man, the son of God, appeared because they, if they bowed down, they, there was no need for the fourth man to appear. Because they would not have been in the fire. I like what the scripture says. They came out of the fire, they did not smell of smoke. Their, the hair of their heads was not singed. I, I normally put it in, a, in our context to say their clothes smelled of the, the washing soap that, was, that had been used or this fabric softener in our country. It's called Stay Soft. Uh, when they came out of the fire, their clothes were smelling of Stay Soft. That's how victorious they were because they did not bow. But if you bow, you lose your testimony. You lose your song. Much like the message we, we shared a while ago to say in from Psalm 137, by the rivers of Babylon, they we wept when we remembered Zion. Our tormentors, our captors, uh, tormentors and tormented us and said, sing us one of those songs of Zion. It's like the devil will be laughing at you when you compromise. He says, come on, sing those songs of Zion. And, and the answer is, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? It's difficult to then rejoice when you compromised. It's difficult to give a testimony. You can't give a testimony when you compromise. But when we stand our ground, that's when we can be able to see our God lifted up, our God exalted, and people will begin to respect. Like I'm saying, it might not be immediate. But with time, people will then say, no, you know, I know so and so. I remember in this particular instance, there was pressure for this, but they stood their ground. What we need is men and women that will not bow to any of the standards or any of the pressures that the enemy brings. I, I like what one individual says uh, quite a lot to say. If you're in a particular context and there are people that are putting pressure with you that to sin or to compromise, it, it, to say that the same person who sins with you can sin against you. In other words, if you are with people and you are sinning and with them as if you, you are comrades in sin, the very same people that sin with you can sin against you. So that's, it's a, it's a, you, you, you don't win, you, you lose. Because uh, I, 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 when, I share, when I thought about this, there's an expression that... Uh, came across in my mind that I saw again in a movie last night to say there's no honor among thieves. In other words, because you are on the wrong platform, you are, your, your friendship is on the wrong platform, the very same chap who is sinning with you, compromising with you, can sin against you. And you have no moral authority to speak against them because you participated in the sin. We must... Uh, when we don't compromise, we are on higher ground. We have moral authority to correct the situation. In our country, I remember not so long ago when we used to uh, have fuel uh, queues. I refused to jump queues. And that gave me moral authority to correct anyone that dared jump a queue. You must come, you must have 
come when I did correct a fuel queue. I ended up being like the owner of the service station, giving directions to everyone because I had higher moral authority. That's what happens when you don't bow. If you bow, you bend. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to say, no, you know what? The God whom we serve will deliver us from this. Even if he doesn't, we are not going to bow down. I'm sharing this, I know, in, 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 in some countries where you might be listening right now, there are other standards that are being put. Uh, uh, and sometimes some of these standards uh, are a compromise to the scriptures. When you stand against some of these things, you are told that you are, yours is hate speech. Hate speech. But what you are declaring is what the scriptures say. And so I, I, uh, we need to be able to continually not bow down. Uh, and even if it's called hate speech, uh, I'm talking in particular reference to uh, issues uh, of, of moral sexual orientation. Uh, it does not mean you hate the individual, but what it means is that you disapprove of the lifestyle. To say the scriptures do not uh, approve of that uh, and be able to stand against. So, so I know in some countries that is called hate speech. But that is not hate speech. We must be able to continually declare what the scriptures tell us. And so, I don't know what you face on a daily basis. Um, the, but the pressure, if you have not faced what I'm talking about, you will definitely face it. This is not a prophecy. This is a, 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 a guaranteed thing. You will face the pressure. The pressure to compromise. Sometimes the pressures come from on the sexual level in terms of male and female. You might be forced to compromise. Uh, your standard to, to say uh, I'm, I'm married and this is I, w I, will, I, I'm, I'm, I will stick to, to my spouse the pressure out there is to, uh, to to be unfaithful but you must be able to say no I will not be unfaithful I will be faithful to my spouse uh, uh, and, and, not ref and, and, and refuse to bow because if you bow you bend there is no two ways about it. But if you stand your ground, the God whom you serve will be lifted up. And people will respect you ultimately for your stand. Let's not yield to the pressures that are around us. Let's not bow down to the standards that are being set that are contrary to God's word. We must be able to stand. Uh, Shadrach and Mishael says, even if it doesn't, we are not going to bow. So we must be able to stand like that, to say, uh, even if... God doesn't come through for me. I'm not going to bow down to this thing. I'm going to stand my ground. This is what I believe and God, and God will come through because God is faithful. We are living in times where evil is running rampant. Like I said, I read Romans 2 uh, talking of inventors of new forms of evil. I thought, goodness me, there will be new evil that is going to be invented and pressure put upon us to uh, bow down to that. We must refuse. We must stick to the standard of God's word because that is what is required of us. And when we do, God will lift us up. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, a nation is made up of people. So righteousness will exalt you. It doesn't minimize you. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you less of a woman. When you live right, it lifts you up. It exalts you. It doesn't. Uh, God is a maximizer. Uh, Edwin Lewis Cole used to say, God is a maximizer. He's not a minimizer. He, he makes you more of a man, more of a woman when you obey his word and live according to his standards. Uh, more of a, of a young man, more of a young woman when you live according to his standards. If you bow, you bend. Do not bow. The God whom we serve, O King, will deliver us. Even if it doesn't, we are not going to bow down. We need men and women with such nature and with such character. Do not bow down to the standards that are contrary to God's word. May God bless you and give you the courage to stand up. Amen and amen.